Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Pity Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Kat Jamie and Steve Francis about the documentary The Grizzly Truth. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. I was saying before we started, I have a Grizzlies hat. I'm not wearing it, so I feel a bit underdressed. Um, Kat, here's the thing. It's, it's, it's clear cut. The Grizzlies are your team. They will always be your team. It's one thing to have ideas of making a film about your favorite team. It's never actually making it. When were the wheels officially in motion for you to make this documentary? Probably back when I was in university uh, in film school. So I don't know. Um like 2006, 2007, like, you know, over a decade ago. Yeah, absolutely. And has it hit you that, like, you made this film, people are talking about it, people could be able to do this big, like, red carpet event. Like, it's pretty crazy, right? It is. Um, no, I, I, it hasn't really sunk in. Um, I'm just excited to see everyone tomorrow. We've sold out um, the, uh, the Center Performing Our Arts, which I think seats about, like, 1800 yep. um so it's just gonna be so cool to see everyone decked out in grizzlies gear and uh yeah i'm 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 thrilled to be sharing uh you know the the day with, with steve and the rest of the vancouver grizzly players that are in town absolutely now steve this is the first time in a long time that you're talking about your experience with the vancouver grizzlies i'm sure at one point you knew this day would come the opportunity to kind of talk about it all how has it been now that after all these years, you're talking about your experiences involving the Vancouver Grizzlies? Um, it's, I mean, I, I, like you said, I didn't know it was going to happen. I didn't know I was going to meet Kat. But the way that it came about was, you know, storybook. You know, um, a diehard Vancouver friend, fan who loved the Grizzlies and the diehard Grizzly uh, nemesis, me. And... Um, I thought it would be great that, you know, that we, we were able to, you know, to talk with each other about it, you know, the right way. Absolutely. Kat, you're putting this documentary. This is like a big, like even seeing the trailer, like this is, this is big, you know, figuring out, you know, the departure of the Grizzlies and everything. There's a lot of factors and a lot of questions you want to put in this documentary. What would you say were things, including, you know, um, having Steve involved that you really ha wanted to really include for this documentary? Because I feel like there's a lot to pick from. Yeah, I mean, Steve was probably one of the, there's a few like interviews that I, that were must interviews. Yep. And it was like Steve, Mike Bibby, Sharif, Big Country, Stu Jackson. Like those are the five that I, that like were essential to tell this story. Mm -hmm. um, Thankfully, I was able to sit down with with each one of them and, uh, you know, talk about what happened and, and hear their story. Steve, you know, post NBA career, you know, a lot there's a lot of avenues that a lot of players can take. You know, you have the Steve Francis Foundation. You have upcoming basketball camps. Do you know that once you're done in the NBA, you're going to still stay in the sport specifically? Or do you feel like you, you're not sure at, at some point? Well, until my kids make their decision about college and yep. things like that, my foundation started the night I got drafted, actually the morning before. Um, I went in with an open mind, uh, already said my piece about, you know, what I wanted, what I hoped for. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they didn't happen. But uh, to continue post-basketball, doing the things that I've always loved to do, it's the same thing. Absolutely. Um, Kat, what would you say... And you could definitely tie this back into the documentary based on what people know without maybe watching the Grizzly Truth and knowing that much about what happened. What would you say is like the biggest misconception about like the Vancouver Grizzlies specifically for someone from the outside, not knowing that as much as like, you know, you know what I mean? I think one of the biggest misnomers is that fans didn't support the team. Yep. And that's one of the main reasons why the team left. And I don't, I don't, believe that's true through my research that was something that uh was disproven you know um but i think vancouver grizzlies fans are a special type of fan uh you know we cheered for this team we love this team even though we were not the greatest in fact we were one of the worst teams in the nba um, and i just think that just goes to show how much 
Vancouver fans love the Grizzlies, um, which again, it goes to my point of why we deserve another shot at the NBA. Absolutely. Would you say that was one of the kind of the main goals of this? I mean, you wanted to, I mean, I feel like just from watching the documentary, like the passion you had for this team is like second to none. Like, no, I don't think anyone can match that. That's unbelievable. I just want to say, but is that kind of, is that like gravy on the mashed potatoes of maybe the hope of getting the team back? Or is it also to show your passion? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's both for yeah. sure. But I make films because I believe the, in the power of film. Like, that's why I'm a filmmaker. It's why I tell stories. That's why I'm a documentary filmmaker um, or why I love to make documentary films um, because I believe in, that they have power to affect change. Um, and so in this situation with this story, like, you know, um, I'd love to to think of the Vancouver Grizzlies in, different, in a different way. We weren't just lovable losers. We were, you know, we were a team that was gaining steam um, and just, you know, the plug was pulled too soon. Um, you know, I think um, um, these films that I've made, I've made four Grizz Vancouver Grizzlies related films. Yeah. They're all, they're all to hopefully start the conversation to, to try to get a team back uh, to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. I can't assume this. Steve, have you watched the film? Not at all. Not she yet. won't let me see it yet. <laughs> okay, good. Can you imagine if I started saying like, hey, Steve, what did you think of this and this? And like, I haven't seen it. See, you no. can't assume anymore. I do a lot of interviews with people from, from TV shows and movies on like Netflix and Amazon. And I ask and they're like, actually, you know, I haven't seen it yet. But and I just like, I, you can't make the assumption anymore. But uh, <laughs> one day, maybe... May like one day, like, is it one of those things though? Cause there's going to be a lot of emotion here for sure. But is it one of those things maybe that you're like, I don't know if I can see it. Like, does that ever come to mind at all? I wouldn't have traveled this far. Yeah. Um, you know, I wouldn't have traveled this far if this wasn't something that I want to put, you know, a final under the rug to, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, I have my foundation of my kids and that's been my foundation. Just, yeah. you know, letting them see some of the things that, you know, happened to me that I, that, you know, that were out of my hands. Like I had no control over these things and, yeah. you know, a lot of things. What was the first, like, what was the year cat, like the first conversation between you two about this film? Like, have you put a date on it? No, I mean, uh, you, you saw in the film, I kind of, I show up randomly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there were no chats like that. before that at all or anything? There was uh, the, I like I I did try to reach out, um, and that's why I knew like okay I have to I have to fly to I have to fly to Houston, <laughs> to, you know to talk to Steve. So that was like the first time that we had met and chatted, um, and uh, yeah you know obviously grateful that Steve was open <laughs> to talking to me and you know it was an autograph session. I and I saw that like you have you literally have like two seconds to be like nice to meet you, take a photo, <laughs> find this, but Steve like. You know, we, I had the line for like five, at least like five minutes or so, yes, like, yes. you know, cause we started talking and, um, and so thankfully no one like told me to go away and, you know, Steve was, was, was great. And we were able to chat. Steve, your son is playing high school baseball, I believe. Is that correct? Thank you. Thank you. Everybody's saying basketball. <laughs> uh, like, you know, baseball, basketball, potential path of pro athletes. So mindset for a lot of it is, 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 is similar. I feel like what are those conversations you're having with him about getting for in the him, zone? For him is different. Okay. I had out of poverty to play basketball yeah. and for him, the things that I went to, to get to where I'm at, he doesn't need sports to advance anywhere. So it wasn't like when he was born, Hey, play basketball. Um, he decided, you know, he played a little bit here and there, but you know, uh, a lot of my friends are starting, and, and a lot of coaches are taking notice of him slowly growing, getting taller, and being an athlete. So, uh, to me, I'm very happy about it. Oh, absolutely. Kat, I, I look at this documentary, and there's, is it is there a little bit of like, I mean, you say you made four, and I'm just wondering about this, because horror movies and documentaries are like the two I feel like sweet spots right now where there's so much appetite for that content like compared to everything else I feel like it's those are the two do you find there's pressure knowing that there's so many eyes on documentaries and there's so many out there and sometimes some people have limited time and the pandemic's starting to like people are like the restrictions are being lifted so maybe there's not like, do you know what I mean by that yeah, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, my team and I um, just want to 
we wanted to make a fun and entertaining film. There, there are a lot of great sports docs out right now. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I, we're all super proud of what we created together. Um, and I feel like it, it's on par with what's being put out right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. I want to ask you, Steve, on the court, what is, in your opinion, the hardest thing about playing basketball? And Because the thing is, I've asked a lot of athletes this before, and everyone gave me a different answer. But what, for you, was the hardest thing specifically? Just to adjust to the travel. Yeah. Um, adjusting to the travel, getting in 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, have to practice and play the same day. Yeah. Uh, the travel was probably the most effective thing for me. Oh, absolutely. Is it one of those things, too, as well? But even, like, you know... There, there's so much you need to do to play in the NBA. There's like shooting, defense, and everything. Do you feel like there was kind of like from what you saw your days, like was there, you know, emphasis on things that shouldn't have been emphasis? Was there misconception about like defense versus offense? Like I'm just wondering, like on the court specifically. It depends on your coach and who the person yeah. else you're playing with. It depends on that. Um, for myself, I had nine coaches in eight years, so I'm kind of used to changing system every, you know, every so often, but. Again, things that you can't control but play basketball. No, absolutely. Does it feel a little strange wearing the, the Vancouver Grizzlies gear? Um, I'm sorry. I had to ask. I'm sorry. No, because I... I, I, I <laughs> it looks good. It looks, good it looks great. I just... I had to ask it. Come on. Like, I... <laughs> I wore it uh, when I came here. With you did? Everyone. That was the last time I put it on. But like I said, it came from the right person for me to put it on. Absolutely. Cat Steve, yeah. I want to thank you both so much for chatting about the Grizzly Truth. It was great chatting with you both. Thank, thank you so much, you. Peter. Um, Kat, very quickly, can you plug away like the social medias when people could see the film, like all that quickly? Um, so, yes. So follow the film, Twitter, the, Gri the Grizz Truth, um, and then on Instagram, the Grizzly Truth Film. And we will be doing our theatrical release in December. So make sure you're following all the social media channels to be the first to know um, when you can watch it in theaters. And Steve, where can we find out about your doc, uh, your foundation? Is there a website? www.stevefrancisfoundation.com Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turner of youtube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. And until next time, this is Kat Jamie, Steve Francis, talking about the grisly truth and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.